Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Reaper blog. I'm John. In this video, I'm going to show you what's new in Reaper 517. All right, so let's start off by looking at some of the automation actions that have been added. Write latched envelopes from edit cursor to end of project. Write latched envelopes from edit cursor to start of project. Write latched envelopes from edit or play cursor to first touch position, as well as write latched envelopes to time selection. All right, so I'm going to go through these. I've got a little automation toolbar set up here. I've got a little bit of automation on the guitar bus for this track. Track is set to latch. If you've worked with automation before, you know that once you start automating something, you need to continue automating it to make any changes that you want. So these actions make it a little bit easier. All right, so I'm going to come in here and work with the control surface to find a good level for these guitars as the vocals come into this section. Here we go. All right, so what I did there was write from edit cursor, um, what is that called? Write latched envelopes from edit cursor or play cursor. So from where I stopped, it wrote back to where I first touched that controller. So we can play this back again. And that's a little drastic, and that's fine uh, for this demonstration, because we're going to uh, do this in time selection mode next. So. Make a time selection up to there. And now we're going to find you know, a similar level. And then we're going to use this right to time selection action. Sounds good. Done. So that's a pretty awesome action uh, just to quickly find a balance and snap it in. And that also works on plugins. And real quick, let's just look at these other actions. So uh, let's look at the right to end action next. So uh, we're going to put the edit cursor here, hit play, uh, find a level, and then we're going to write to end. You never change, yeah, you just stay the same. You never change, yeah, you just. And there we go. It's written from where I started playing. Uh, and you can see this little ramp here. That's 100 milliseconds uh, based on this setting right here. For me. So now in this part needs to come up again, so. All right, so let's try that. All right, that sounds cool to me. And let's look at um, this part here. When the fire burns out and my hands All right, so that's a little loud. Let's, uh, let's try this right to end action. Can I just do this? There we go. Level out the silence. It's not as hard as it sounds A picture-perfect family Your doubt is never around And see there I had the cursor in the wrong position I don't want to change the start, the playback position So what we could actually do kind of to uh, cheat that Is to move the edit cursor on an item As we're uh, playing instead of clicking in the empty area so I'm going to play this. Level out the silence. It's not as hard as it sounds. And I click here and then right to start. There we go. So it's written automation for this entire section based on the three seconds of level tweaks that we set up. Another thing we can do is automation on plugins. So in this section here, What I would like to do is add in a band here, and I want like a wide, a wide kind of boost like this. And 
it without it. I think for this section of the song, it'll sound really cool. So I'm just going to pull that down. So it's not being, it's not doing anything at this point. Latch to so make my track latch. And when I, and when I start moving this controller, I'm going to move the gain knob up here. It's going to start writing that automation. Let's just do it in the time selection mode. And write to time selection. Go into read mode. And here we go. And we'll come out. And let's listen to that with everything else. All right, that's enough for the automation stuff. It seems really simple, but there's a huge workflow improvement. It's something that I need to uh, start doing more of. Pretty much everyone needs to start working with automation a lot more, especially when uh, Reaper gives us easier options. Okay, guys, now let's look at this option for discarding an incomplete take with a variable threshold. So I've got this synth here. I've got uh, it set to record output stereo. It's a virtual synth taking MIDI in, but it's recording audio onto the track. Got a two bar time selection. Cycle is on, click tracks on. I'm gonna start one bar early and I'll just play something. Uh, and this option is turned off by the way. All right. And if I hit stop, I've got this short incomplete take. Now let's turn this on, hit apply, and I'll make another two bar selection, start one bar early, and try that again. I hit stop, and that incomplete take disappears, but that audio is still there if I extend the take. It just saves you from having to um, delete the last active take or cropping to the selected take. That's a really handy feature. Simple thing that saves a lot of time. All right, so we're gonna look at the routing matrix next. Well, let me get some tracks in here. A few tracks, and I will make the these four tracks into a folder. And now there's this new option right here. I see the tracks that are in a folder now have this F uh, showing that they are within the track above. So uh, that's new. The tooltip also tells you what track it's uh, connected to. So parent track send is track one. If we look at the routing window for this track, we see parent track also says send one. So this is new as well. It used to just say parent send, and you wouldn't know which track it was that it was sending to. So this is a little thing that uh, makes things a little bit easier for us. Okay, finally, let's look at some of the video stuff. FFmpeg3 is uh, now supported. They removed support for version one. Uh, there's this global option for disabling high-res peaks, uh, which also means that there's a new low res peaks option for video items. So here we can see this is a normal looking waveform on an MOV file. Uh, if we zoom in a little bit, uh, you see it's sort of like pixelated, blocky, um, but it's very, very fast. We can click and drag this with no lag. We can zoom in and out and we can scroll without any lag. That is not the case when you're using the high res peaks like we were uh, up until today. So that's a fantastic option. I'm gonna show you in the preferences, this option here for media, video, disable high resolution peaks for video items. So let me show you what that's like without it. I'm gonna click this on. Uh, this is a new option here. This is also an, a new option and I'll come back to that. So high resolution peaks are on, click okay. And now if we zoom in, there's a little big lag and it zooms and scrolls extremely slow. And that's because it's reading audio off of this compressed file directly instead of using um, 
like a peak file that we have with audio waveforms. So this new low resolution peak option is great. When high resolution peaks option here is unchecked, that means we're using the low resolution option. If you click it once, that means you're going to use whatever is set in the uh, Reaper preferences. And if you click it again with it checked, that means that this is going to use the old way of showing the peaks. So we can turn that off. Uh, and now if we do ignore audio, and uh, we can click this option, and any other video clips in the project are going to be silent. Um, but unlike version 5.16 or 5.0, the waveforms don't disappear. So we can still use these as a visual reference. So it's pretty nice to have that as a new feature. The last thing I want to show you today, in the rendering window, we're looking at the uh, OSX only AV Foundation output. They've now fixed the end of stream encoding. And what that means is that the last few frames or few seconds of a video that you export with this decoder, it used to be that it was frozen. So it would just get stuck on one frame near the end and the audio would play fine, but the video would freeze. With a longer video, you may not notice that. I never had any complaints about my YouTube videos because I just made that into the call to action at the end of the video where I say subscribe. But if you were exporting just a section of your video to show someone else, or uh, you're exporting a, a small area to use as a new clip in another project, that freezing was almost impossible to get rid of. This is a fantastic fix that helps me personally. And I uh, got to thank Kakos for fixing that for us. All right, guys, that's just some of the new features and changes in uh, Reaper 5.17. You can see the full change log here, and there is a ton of stuff, stuff that's not so exciting to show you, stuff that needs uh, A-B comparisons between the different versions, lots of bug fixes, lots of stuff to check out. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and visit reaperblog.net for more tutorials.